Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, can dehydration cause dizziness and balance problems? And the simple answer is, yes it can. Um, <clears throat> so our vestibular system, which is within our inner ear, has two components. It has a semicircular canal component, so these different canals, there's three of them on each side, that have fluid within them, and then called the endolymph, and then also our vestibule, which is more for sensing like gravity or uh, translation or tilt, rather than the canals are more like rotation or up and down rotation, side to side rotation, okay? And there's fluid within all that. And that fluid needs to stay at a specific or at a um, exact specific gravity so that the sensor in there is this little like cupola that kind of bends back and forth can sense the changes of the fluid movement to tell us where our head is in space, side to side, up and down. And we combine that input with our vision and with our proprioceptive system like our uh, muscles and joints in our neck, in our feet, in our legs, to tell us in our back, to tell us where we are in space. Well, that vestibular system, like I said, with that endolymph and that, that fluid in there, if we cause dehydration, dehydration changes that specific gravity, changes that fluid potential, and therefore can make us feel a little less stable because we're not getting that input from our inner ear as well as accurately as we should. So the article I want to talk about today is a relatively old article. Um, it is from 2010 and it's called uh, Exercise and Dehydration, a Possible Role of Inner Ear in Balance Control Disorder. And so if we just kind of look at the abstract first, they, they take healthy individuals, um, exercise dehydration, okay, 10 sportsmen that perform 45 minutes of exercise on a cycle ergometer and intensity just below their ventilation threshold, okay, and then without fluid intake. Um, they perform before, immediately after, and 20 minutes after exercise a sensory organization test, which evaluates balance. And so there's six different scenarios that are going to more preferentially test vision versus inner ear versus our proprioceptive system. Uh, combine three visual conditions, either eyes open, eyes closed, or a sway referenced with visual surround motion. So basically there's motion going in front of their eyes, so they don't necessarily, they can't use their eyes just to focus. And then two platform conditions, either a stable platform or then a sway reference platform. We'll talk about these here in a sec. Uh, they check blood samples before and after. Um, they saw that ex exercise induced this mild dehydration characterized by a little bit of body mass loss uh, and increased proteinemia, so increased protein in the blood. The postural performances decreased immediately after exercise, mainly in the standard situation. So basically eyes open with stable visual surround. So that's just eyes open on the platform, looking straight ahead, it decreased there. And then the only other thing was when only the vestibular cue was reliable. So when there are an eyes closed in a sway referenced platform. So basically, the platform is now foam or could move and their eyes were closed. When that happens, the platform were taking away the, um, the ability for our appropriate reception from our feet and then the eyes are closed, we're taking away vision. So now only we're looking at that vestibular system. Um, this decrease in vestibular input was correlated with the dehydration level. Um, they also finally saw that postural performance normalized after 20 minutes when possibly rehydration was was, uh, was needed, even though they weren't given any, any water. Um, but what they suspect was that the fluid buildup that was in the muscles from the exercise was able to get back into the blood and then rehydrate the vestibular system in that inner ear or that vestibular uh, apparatus. So even though muscular, muscular fatigue could explain the decrease in postural performances, the vestibular fluid modifications may also be involved in its influence of the intralabyrinthine homeostasis. Intralabyrinthine is just the inner ear, in, inside the inner ear, lowering thus the contribution of the vestibular input 
information on balance control. So as we kind of talk a little bit about this one, um, I want to just go right to their protocol first, right here. And so again, first they were just tested with an exercise stress test, just make sure that they have normal heart rate, normal oxygen uptake, um, simple things just to make sure that their uh, heart is okay. Then the pre-exercise, they did the test, they looked at urine, weight, they did a blood collection. During the exercise, they just checked the heart rate and power output. Then again, post-exercise, they did all these same tests. They rested 20 minutes, and then they redid that sensory organization test to see if there's any improvement, okay? So let's go back to that sensory organization test. It's right there, okay. So the first condition is eyes open on a fixed support, then eyes closed on a fixed support. So we're taking away that visual component, vision is absent, and now we're just using proprioception in our vestibular system to be able to stand straight up. Condition three is that um, the sway reference surround with fixed support. So now we still have a fixed platform, but there is motion going on in front of us. And so we're basically altering vision rather than taking away vision with the eyes closed, we're altering it, we're making it uh, hyperactive. Like we're almost, our vision is telling us we're moving, but we're really not. Then condition four, eyes open with, this, with the altered support. So now the support underneath the feet are moving and that alters proprioception. Then eyes closed with the sway uh, support. So again, vision absent, altered proprioception. This is now we're just looking at the vestibular system. And then the last one is the, the proprioceptive is moving with the visual system is moving. And so it's altered vision and then uh, altered proprioception. Okay. And what they did is they looked at if you can combine a couple of these, for instance, C5 and C1, eyes open fixed support and eyes closed with that sway reference support, it's more looking at that vestibular system, okay? And so when we look at the graphs that they have, on what changed, we see that post-exercise, so pre-exercise is the white, post-exercise is the light gray, and then dark gray is after 20 minutes, we saw the greatest change when in that in that vestibular component where we're closing the eyes and have that sway reference on the foam pad okay and that that great change was then almost completely normalized after 20 minutes of rest that's showing that the vestibular system had a large component to this poor balance control afterwards while all the other ones were mostly insignificant okay and again when they looked at for just the vestibular system, so they combined those that C1 condition one and condition five. Um, they had again, it was more um, more significant, or it was actually significant, while the other ones were not. So therefore, this is why they correlated that the cause of the balance problems must be through the inner ear, and dehydration must have caused that because dehydration related to that the loss of mass. Uh, and the proteinemia uh, was directly correlated to that loss in balance. And so, again, we kind of talked about in the beginning um, these things, but um, all like all displacement sensitive structures immersed in the in the fluids, the inner ear sensory structures are influenced by that intralabyrinthine pressures. So again, that specific gravity and that dehydration can alter that. Modification of the composition, volume, and pressure of the endolymphatic lipid liquid may induce hearing loss and or vertigo. Again, vertigo is dizziness, but can also lead to balance problems. Um, and we said the postural control improvement begins six minutes after the end of exercise, which is related to that decreased uptake. That's possible. Um, but again, the release at rest of the water accumulated during exercise in the muscles could thus participate in that recovery of that vestibular labyrinth or that inner ear to then improve postural stability that occurs 20 minutes post-exercise. <clears throat> so why is this important? This is important because everybody, especially as we age, um, let's start. As we age, many people actually start losing 
are having dysfunction in their inner ear. They start having more vestibular problems uh, where they have balance problems leading to falls or they, have, they get dizziness. And so this is one reason why hydration is so important. Having the proper amount of water, having the proper electrolytes, and then avoiding things that cause dehydration. So excess caffeine, excess alcohol, or even alcohol in general. Um, exercising too much without proper rehydration can all lead to um, this subtle dehydration causing poor balance problems leading to falls that can then cause further injuries like concussions, like uh, hip injuries, um, or, um, or, other, or other injuries that can then cause people, cause these older people uh, and the elderly to then get into the hospital. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. So we want to make sure we stay hydrated at all costs. Um, and that's, again, not just drinking water, but making sure that there's adequate salt and electrolyte intake from our foods um, to, to properly have that good homeostatic uh, control in our blood. So if you have any questions or comments, I would love to answer them. Please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, uh, please leave them below as well. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.